Uh, good evening, Kenneth Tortoise Capital, nightly strategy podcast for December 13th, 2023. Um, the day of all days for the hybrid swing, as we said all week, the uh, all signs pointing to yes. Um, volatility favorable. The RL10 had reversed. The RL90 is giving it juice. And um, today the Fed said, hey, next year is going to be all systems go. And the market responded uh, decisively. So let's just take a look at the net effect. Everything that we held overnight just went uh, ballistic today. Um, Alcoa, this was a one, two, three entry early this morning. And these are all holding like six or seven R uh, and holding positions overnight. AI, no trade. Amazon, yesterday's uh, caught a two is well in the money. That's about 4R. No ad. Caterpillar, we exited the, um, the long. It started suffering. And then uh, when the Fed announced, it just put a placeholder there, and that thing went through the roof like a growth stock. Cliff, um, the usual. CVS in the uh, services. Disney, uh, didn't trade it. Dish didn't trade it. Devon Energy, the whole energy sector was prepared to cycle, and um, that was a Cata two, and uh, RLXD re regression line crossing the dragon, and that's holding three R. Electronic Arts, no trade. Emerging markets, holy mackerel. So uh, yesterday we were long. It rolled over and gapped down, so we were minus one. So the revenge trade gets that R back, and then an, uh, the Fed announced, and it started taking off, so why not? And that's holding 5R and more to come. Ethereum, 3R. Mexico, yesterday's move held up really well all day. I didn't add to it, but... Um, just ran out of capital. Mexico, or uh, yeah, yeah, Mexico had all the uh, latent energy all all bottled up and it exploded. And that's uh, 6R. Intel, uh, tech leader holding an R. International paper. So all the industrials did very well today. That's 3R. Real estate responding. IYR. Coca-Cola, uh, you know, I'm just kicking myself for missing that one yesterday. Uh, ran out of capital today. Regional banks smashing their way north. They're going to do very well in a uh, in a lending environment with 75 basis points of anticipated cuts for next year. Regional banks should do well. Uh, no trade in Mattel. McDonald's, uh, yesterday's little emerging dragon, which I hated and which closed well, dominated today. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten R on the first one from yesterday and four R from the second position. That's 14 R in McDonald's. Merck, uh, above that red line we were looking at before, an emerging dragon, four R. Microsoft. This was the anomaly today. And so I'm going to watch Microsoft carefully. Um, this is not really explainable. Yesterday's uh, 1, 2, 3 entry uh, peaked early and then sold off. So we cashed in the usual way for 3R. And then it did not respond to the Fed announcement. So this is like the dog that didn't bark. That's one that's very curious. Uh, smashingly good in marijuana. We held the two positions overnight. That sold off harshly all the way down to $6. And then the Fed announced, and uh, then we just covered it, didn't play it. But that's, that's 15R. Ridiculous. NVIDIA, we just covered this like... Uh, 
This was like Microsoft. That um, that one also did not really pay off. That's that's odd as well. So we're going to watch Nvidia and Microsoft to see if they play catch up tomorrow. But we cashed three R near the open to raise some money. Clean energy dominated. This is, I think, a reflection of uh, more government spending coming for uh, government-sponsored green energy. That one exploded with early adopters. Rivian exploded. The S&P just, you know, the, the perfectly efficient move went exploding northward today. That's what fireworks look like. Treasuries responded to the upside as well. Uh, Tesla, uh, I, I couldn't get into that one today, uh, ran out of capital. Uh, it's so big that it didn't respond to, on a percentage basis like the other ones did, but um, look for more follow through there. Walmart, the trade of trades. This SSC that I hated and reluctantly added a COTA two yesterday, today reluctantly added prior to the Fed. And then a Fed announced, so I said, why not? Market's money. And then it closed at the high of the day. That's 20R in Walmart. And all it did is complete the second half of the cup. And if you go back five or six days, I talked about this trade on the downside and why I reluctantly took this trade but took it because I said, I'm not going to wait for the cup and handle to form. I'd like to get the other half of the cup and lo and behold that's almost an entire career in Walmart and more coming US Steel smashing its way north I hated this one yesterday and reluctantly added and then it just exploded for another 12 R so I mean this was the day of days for the this was probably the single biggest day of collecting R uh, all year and uh, was well prepared and therefore I got lucky. Um, wasn't much room for the sniper work today because I was getting all the capital deployed into swing trades and wanted a broad array. But let's see what we got. Um, So this is uh, U.S. Steel in the morning. Uh, that's what it closed like yesterday, that tight compression. Yeah, George, this was like, this was ridiculously, it's not even computable. This was U.S. Steel. And now, uh, so I got that initial position in and it exploded. And I was ready just to see what it was going to do. But when it peaked right here at the RL10 rollover, I invoked the uh, uh, skin of the dragon, so I end up getting out there. I think, you know, in retrospect, I probably should have gotten out in that first bar and just taken the gift, but I was... Uh, and then, then I was setting up for the Fed, so I didn't do anything else. And this move off the bottom here, that was two... That's two R10s. That's a double-sized uh, safety box right there. Uh, this one is Alcoa. So there's your standard risk box. Uh, at 11 o'clock, it made a new high of the day. And spring turned to summer. And the PSAR had flipped, so I just held my nose. And then I had some money in hand as the Fed was getting ready to announce. Boom, second position, third position, fourth position. And on a uh, the intraday trade, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, four, two, and one. So that's about another 14 or 15 R, which gets converted to the swing trade. Just ridiculous.
I, I don't even add it into the system quality number counts, to be honest. Because it distorts the, it just creates expectations is what it does. So I'm trying to discount the enthusiasm. I'm almost, it's almost depressing. If I, it sounds weird, but um, I like it to be hard. So I'm, you know, it's, I have a hard time with days like today. Um, I'm sorry, I thought I had the, uh, I have had the chat room open, sorry. Just a couple trades today. Um, 13th. Yeah, so George, here's what I want to say. Um, I, I want you to use the AAR form different than what you're doing. This is becoming a trading plan for you. These are, these are goal. This is not an assessment of how you perform today. These are just notes to yourself as part of your written trading plan. So you're not actually performing an assessment. What you need to be doing is using this as a rubric, as a standard, and then actually check yourself with a blank sheet and say, did I do those things? Like today, in your planning session, did you review your goals and update them as necessary? Did you, did you write down your risk and number of shares for each target? So you gotta go through all those yes or no questions and under sustain are going to be green dots for things that you did well and you want to keep doing red dots for things that you didn't do and that has to be a daily grade of are you actually doing the things that you're writing down in here and then as you look at your sustains and improves those become candidates for actions and so this whole column over here the, all of those are just goals, principles, procedures, checklists, or whatever for your trading plan. What you need to do in the action process is identify the things that you want to sustain and improve, and then pick a couple that you're actually going to commit to to do tomorrow. So this is becoming not a useful assessment. This is really you developing a written trading plan. You need to start holding yourself accountable, are you doing the things that you are saying that you're going to do in that written plan? Uh, let's see. couple are on the early move. Why does it look like yesterday's? Because it was yesterday. I remembered the I remembered the trade from yesterday. Uh, here's Kevin. Yeah, um, I don't mind you not trading the day of an explosive Fed move. But what you I, what I want you to do is take a look at how the the 10 day and the 30 day market condition and the s p all of those if you take a look at yesterday's uh closing report i mean every single one of the ndx's was in the green the volatility was very favorable for long side it had just made a new 150 day high uh it could not have been stronger signals and the relief rally that kicks in here when it breaks to an all-time high like the dow had just gotten above thirty-seven thousand for the first time ever that's the lowest risk trade that there ever was and so we want to be postured to be able to react to that like you don't like to trade post fed speech oh yes you do yes you absolutely do 
where you get in on this one is take your standard risk box and put it above the peak of the RL10. That's an all-time high. That's an emerging dragon. So you get in when it breaks above the peak of that RL10. So when it comes out of this river, you get in right there, right where your pointy arrow is pointing at it because it's leaving all of this behind. That is a standard Z3P breakout. That's exactly where you get in, right where your point, your finger is pointing at it. And you use the width of this channel, even if you went all the way back over here to the low of the RL10 and declared that as the channel, that's still a 5R trade. And you don't even have to hold that overnight. So we got to be prepared for that kind of a move. All right, so George, on this one, uh, I think you're late getting in. When this crosses the VWAP as a immediate fail, stop and reverse as possible, in the same way that this should be a stop and reverse, which I think you did get, um, this one could have been stop and reverse. And make your circle smaller so that we get some fidelity on where that entry is actually occurring. This is too much of a blob to actually see. Like, are you getting in at the bottom of the box or the middle of the circle? You know, that, that kind of. So let's get some precision uh, inside there. And then the same guidance to you that I gave to, um, that I gave to Kevin. The study, the, study the hybrid portfolio. And there's almost, uh, it's almost deceptive on the, uh, you know, the daily report because everything's going to just look so amazing. I'm just looking for continuities. I would say focus on Walmart, Devon Energy, Microsoft, uh, and Tesla tomorrow, and Brazil and, and, and the Dow because those are the ones that had the most extraordinary moves. And the peripherals are... Um, they're going to follow suit. The other way you could do that is place some of the peripheral things like I, IP should do well and Caterpillar and the regional banks. Um, take a look at the, uh, the hybrid portfolio. If you don't have the symbols in my hybrid portfolio in your own charting package and look and follow along, you need to have them. Uh, so that you can follow along and you can study the charts, the same setups that I'm using. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you to the uh, reports to review. We added a couple new uh, uh, very good briefings from the research weekend uh, for 2023. The research 2023 project added two more um, briefings from today. Uh, so we're continuing to do well on that. Uh, anyway, uh, study the daily report. Be ready for tomorrow. Be ready for massive volatility at the open. Um, and remain calm. Don't get carried away. Pick your target. Trade what you see. Rehearse what it could do, how you're going to get in, how you're going to get out. Pick a couple targets out of the symbols that you saw me brief. And, uh, and be ready for tomorrow. All right, that's everything we got for today, guys.